So a visually calm space, as many of you may know, creates physical calm. However, are you still organized but feel like your space still looks messy? And it may not be due to actual clutter. clutter. It may be actually due to visual clutter, which we are going to talk about in a little bit more detail today. So there are two types of clutter. Clutter number one, most of you are very familiar with, is just uh, a definition for extra things that you may not necessarily need, but you still want around your home like mementos or decor items, personal items that hold a lot of sentimental value, things like that, that may or may not be able to be pared down throughout the years and throughout the seasons. But daily use items like um, soaps, or cutting boards, um, serving ware, different things that you leave out on your countertops and you have on hand often, that is visual clutter. And so why, why is that important? Why is that something that we need to pay attention to? And what does that mean for me in my home? Well, too many items of multiple sizes, multiple colors, multiple labels, all of those things together can feel very busy and overwhelming. And you may not even be aware that it's happening. So that's why I love talking about visual clutter, because again, people who are really, really organized may still be feeling a sense of overwhelm or uh, feeling like their home isn't as pulled together as they would like. And oftentimes it is due to the visual clutter. It can make it, your space feel messy and it can, it can lead to a, a space that just feels like there's a lot going on, again, even if you're really organized. So today we're going to talk about a lot of solutions. Uh, so one solution that most of you have probably heard of is a place for everything and everything in its place. So having designated places for all of those often used items gives you a place to put them back away and it allows you to stay more organized and have things out of the way. But another solution that I love is hiding in plain sight. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that way of getting rid of visual clutter. We're gonna go through a couple of these repeat offenders, um, places that I think in the home are the most prone to visual clutter. And then we're going to talk about at the end, some ways that I, I love, some, some specific items that I love to really help with that visual clutter. So first repeat offender we're going to talk about is the entryway. So I don't know about you guys, but for me in my entryway, shoes are the number one thing that clutter up my entryway more than anything. And between the kids' shoes, my husband's shoes, my own shoes, there's a million different sizes, colors, all of that stuff. And to be honest, it's not always practical for everyone to take their shoes off and put them neatly on a little shoe rack. I mean, we're busy, people are running to soccer, you know, there's a lot going on. And so one of my favorite ways to curb that visual clutter with the shoes is baskets. And I know it seems a little bit counterintuitive throwing your shoes in a basket, but by the time you go over the entryway mat, which is a little bit rough, gets all that dirt off. And then you have, most people have another little mat on the inside of the door. By the time you get to taking your shoes off, most of that residual dirt is off of the shoe. And so having one basket for each person is a great way to tame that shoe clutter. So my daughter has a basket, my son has a basket, um, the husband and I each have a, a space for our shoes. And it's a great way, again, to hide those uh, shoes and make the entryway still really functional, but feel pulled together and a lot more visually calm. Another culprit is mail. I don't know about you guys, but I grab the mail and you, or my husband grabs the mail and we come in and it gets tossed somewhere and it lives there usually for a couple of days before someone goes through it or there is a pile of junk mail or there are some magazines. So having a designated place for the mail when you come in to your home is a great way to curb that visual clutter and keep the mail off the kitchen table or the countertops 
um, in the rest of your home. And the ways that I love to do that are one, if you look at the image on the left, there's a vintage picnic basket on top of this cute little bench that they have. So having a, a beautiful little basket with a lid on top of it is a great spot because you just put it in there, you can close it up, I usually take, you know, the junk mail, throw it in the recycling bin if I can, or in the image on the right, you have this beautiful metal basket that kind of keeps it more front of mind, top of mind, so that you can tackle it, um, you know, right away, those bill, tackle those bills and those items right away. But having a spot that you can come in and drop your mail is also a great way to curb some of that visual clutter in your entryway. Hats and mittens. We live in New England and the seasons are ever changing. And one day it's hot, one day it's cold. And I don't know about you, but hats and mittens are also a big culprit of clutter in my entryway. So two of my favorite ways to curb this clutter. Number one, I have on the back of my closet door in the entry, a shoe, one of these little shoe racks in the image on the left. Mine's not on the outside of the door as shown here, it's actually on the inside of the closet door, but it's a perfect way to hide all of those hats and mittens. And you can have one set of mittens in each pouch, or you can have matching sets in each pouch. Um, you can even label them with the names of the people who they belong to. So your daughter's name, your son's name or who, whoever. Um, so it's a great spot to just quickly shove those hats and mittens and you close the door and it's super out of the way. And then another thing that I really love to do is have lots of hooks everywhere. And I love buying these um, canvas tote bags. This one has a fun little applique on the front and some pretty leather handles. Basically something that looks that you'll love looking at when you come in and it looks great hanging there. And those little tote bags are a perfect place to stash the hats and mittens or even during the summertime, just some sunscreen, some bug spray, uh, some hand sanitizer if you need, but it's just hanging, this little pouch is just hanging there um, for all of stashing all your little items. And what's great about it too, is if you're heading, heading off to a picnic or somewhere, you can grab the tote and it's got all of your stuff in it, which is awesome. Repeat offenders kitchens. So the kitchen countertop is another place where we tend to get a lot of visual clutter. If you look at the image on the left, um, I'm sure many of you have noticed that a lot of the dish soaps come in colors that are probably not working with the color scheme that you have going on in your home right now. So I'm sure many of you probably don't have a neon green color palette or a super hot watermelon color palette. So one of the things that can really detract um, from your decor and can cause a lot of visual clutter and, and just look a little bit more busy is the, are these brightly colored soaps. And then also add in if you have a hand soap or a moisturizer, um, a lotion or something also next to your kitchen sink. So one of the ways that I always suggest that people tackle that is buying two of the same soaps in a dark colored canister. So if you look at the image on the right, you have probably a dish soap and a hand soap. And they're both in the same color canister, which is dark. So it doesn't really matter what color your soaps are, they're hidden. And then the labels are the same. So now it just visually looks a lot more streamlined, looks calmer, has a lot more of a minimalist vibe and you're not seeing all of the different colors of the soaps. One of the things that I'll do is if I see a really beautiful glass container, I'll buy two and then I've spent my money on the expensive soaps. And then when it runs out, I just refill it with the, the less expensive soaps so that I'm not spending a ton of money all the time. But you can also go on Etsy or even on Amazon and look for soap, just amber colored or black soap dispensers and find some that are just blank and you can fill them with whatever you like. Another thing that I love to decant in my kitchen is olive oil. So um, if you look at the olive oil bottles or the oil, regular oil bottles that you cook a lot with, they're all different shapes, different sizes. Again, the oils are different colors. And so if you leave them out on your counter, it can just start to look visually a little bit messy. So I love to buy these beautiful decanters. If you look at the two on the right-hand side, um, 
And what's great about the ceramic one in the middle is it keeps the light out. And so it doesn't allow your oil to break down as fast. But if you use it quickly, if you cook a lot, having it in a clear glass is really not that big of a deal. Um, Again, having something like that on your kitchen counter for all of the oils is a great way to kind of tame that visual clutter. Another area that a lot of people don't think about are the stickers and the labels on things. So if you look through design magazines or if you look through beautiful pictures on Pinterest or Facebook, you'll notice that people are decorating with bowls of fruit. The fruit doesn't have any stickers on it. So that's one super easy way that you can create less visual clutter in your kitchen is by making sure to remove all of those stickers from your produce. And then another hot tip that I always like to mention is arranging your fruit bowl in the color of the rainbow. So put all the green fruit together, put all the red fruit together, the yellow fruit together, and then do it also in order of, um, in order of the rainbow so that it feels a little bit uh, more visually pleasing. So again, with the stickers and the labels, this is a great example of what I was talking about at the beginning of the presentation. If you look at the image on the left, it's super organized. This pantry is way more organized than my pantry will ever be, but it still feels really loud and kind of visually messy versus the pantry image on the right. And that's what I was talking about before with sort of hiding those labels and, and camouflaging the colors. So if you're going to um, organize, use all of the same type of organization tools. So for example, on the image on the right, you have all the baskets are all the same size and they're the same color and they're the same material. And then you can just label what it is on the outside so you know, but that way everything looks uniform from the, the front from the pulled back view. And then all of the stuff inside has the busy labels and the loud colors and all of that kind of stuff. And you can even see on the bottom right hand corner, that's all of the oils and everything. And you don't really see any of the labels. You just see the tops of the bottle. So using all of the same type of organization is a great way to curb that visual clutter. And pretty utility. So if you think about the things that you have to keep on your kitchen countertop or by your kitchen sink, or even just in your kitchen in general, a lot of you I'm sure have sponges, have some kind of bottle brush or some kind of washcloth to wash the, the dishes with. There is a broom or a dustpan, a waste basket, usually right near the sink as well. So if you're going to have those things out on your countertop, making sure that they're in a beautiful material and making sure that they're in a neutral color so that the rest of your space can really be the focal point versus the yellow and green sponge or the blue and red broom or the gray plastic trash can, et cetera, et cetera. And I bet after this uh, presentation, I'd love for you to go around your house and, and really start to notice some of the areas that um, you have colorful utility pieces or colorful soaps. And it's a lot of times, again, what I mentioned at the beginning is that people don't really know what, why the kitchen feels messy or why the space feels visually um, not visually pleasing. And a lot of times, again, it has to do with the materials of the objects that you're leaving out and about in your room or in your home. Another repeat offender bathrooms. I clearly didn't update this image. That is not the bathroom. So ignore that. <laughs> Um, shampoo and body wash. So we all have shampoo in our shower. We all have uh, soap or body wash and the conditioner. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I also have the special face soap and I have a hair mask and all of these different things. And it can start to look really colorful and really messy. So by using uniform bottles and decanting all of your bath materials into something that is the same for everything, that's going to give you that spa-like feel. That's going to really start to visually tame the clutter in your bathroom. And now it's, it's actually quite inexpensive 
to do this, as I had mentioned before, you can find these bottles on Etsy. You can find them on Amazon. They usually come in packs of two or three and they'll come with little labels that say shampoo, soap, conditioner, all the different things so that you can accurately label what it is that you're decanting. And then you'll have bottles of all the same size and color. So it's pretty user-friendly and they're not very expensive. I think I got mine for my shower for maybe $15 for a pack of three. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a small investment, I think for a really big impact. Another repeat offender, I don't know about in your bathroom, but in mine, it's towels. And the towel bar is just something that doesn't, it, uh, it functions really, really well for some people. In my own family, it doesn't function well at all because people don't really put the towels back nicely. It, it can take a little bit more effort to fold them up and put them over the towel bar so that they look nice every time. So one of the things that I like to recommend to clients is making sure you have a good mix of towel bars and some hooks, because um, especially now with these Turkish towels being really on vogue in bathrooms and Turkish towels are uh, a really absorbent type of cotton. They have, um, it's the, between the way that they're woven, um, and they also have, a lot of them have this beautiful fringe at the bottom and come in these uh, beautiful colors. If you look at the image on the right, there are some beautiful patterns happening. Um, though the way those towels drape and hang on hooks in particular is really beautiful. And it's almost like they're designed, the messier they look, the more beautiful they look. Um, so having some towel hooks in your bathroom, in addition to the towel bar, can help curb that clutter a little bit because that the hooks, you know, you just, everyone can do it. You just hook it right up there and, and the way that it drapes becomes part of the design of the room. Another repeat offender I have found is sponges. So uh, I don't know if you guys have seen some of those sort of netted sponges that come in all kinds of colors from pink to blue to green. Some people have um, wildly colored washcloths. Some people um, have, you know, sponges that are, are, again, lots of different colors. And so neutralizing those items that you need to have um, in a way that makes the space, again, feel more visually, visually pleasing. It's in a neutral color. It's something that doesn't detract from the room and allows the room to really be this, the, uh, the showpiece and not have your, your sponge compete for the star of the show. Um, the sponge and then having a washcloth as well that's in a nice neutral color. Those two elements together will really help neutralize a bathroom space. And another thing in the bathroom that can be a little bit tricky are all the other little bits and bobs that you need out on your counter, whether it's Q-tips or cotton balls for your face or a place to put your earrings or your jewelry. A lot of times that stuff just kind of gets scattered all over the counter or underneath the sink and it's falling all over the place. And so having a beautiful neutral place, neutral colored place to put those items is another great way to kind of curb that visual clutter, especially with jewelry that can be very colorful or it can be very loud, having a neutral colored dish to put them in so that it sort of hides all of the different colors is a great way, again, to really tame that visual clutter in your bathroom. Um, as we spoke earlier in the kitchen, baskets are a great way also in the bathroom to tackle some of that, some of that clutter. So if you need a box of Kleenex or lots, you have lots of hairsprays or different hair products, that sort of thing, putting them in baskets so that you don't see all, all those labels and all those brightly colored bottles. Um, basically anything that you need to leave out, if you can put it into a container that neutralizes the look of all of those things, that's what's going to give you that serene space and hide some of that visual clutter. Closets. So this is an interesting one because again, a lot of times you can be really organized in your closet, but it still feels messy and overwhelming. And I don't know about you, but when I'm in a space and 
I open it up and I, I look in. If it doesn't feel visually pleasing to me, it can make me feel a little bit of, I just can feel overwhelmed, especially in a closet where I'm, I'm looking for something to wear or I might be in a rush in the morning. So if you look at the image on the left, this is the same closet. It, you can see it's very organized. There's lots of different kinds of bins for all of the different things. Things are folded nicely. Some of the bins might be a little bit too small for the items, but what's not working particularly in this closet is again, because the bins are all different sizes, they're all different colors, they're all different shapes. So that is sort of adding to the visual clutter in addition to all of the garments that have their, each have their own color. So in the image on the right, by using a uniform way of organizing and adding in the labels, now you can really see that it just, it just feels so much better. And it's really not that much different. It's all the same items. It's just the only thing that's changed are the baskets and the organization that is being used. Here's another really great example of some more uniform organization. This is a hall closet on the right. And this hall closet image in particular, they have all the same kind of colored sheets and colored blankets. That's not necessarily going to be real life. Uh, but what they are doing successfully is, again, having the same baskets, uh, same colorway, same material. And in the image on the right, it is a mixture of the different kinds of baskets, but they're all in similar enough tones and all of the items fit well enough in there that it really does, um, does work successfully. These are also some of my, a few more of my happy helpers. So trays and bowls, when you're trying to organize visual clutter are great solutions. Um, for those of you who have taken my classes in the past, you know how much I love adding a tray and a bowl to the entryway, to the coffee table in the living room. Um, I think both of those those spots are great places for items like these because they can help corral all those littles that you have. Think about the sunglasses or the car keys or um, the TV remotes, you know, making sure you have a little spot that sort of visually camouflages some of those is a great way to help make your space feel put together with really without a lot of effort as well, which is why, again, why I love these trays and bowls in particular. Um, also a great spot for the mail, for fruit, a tray next to your stove is a great place to put all of those oils that you've decanted and maybe a little bowl of salt or um, you know any of the things that you need in your kitchen more often. The having them in a tray, the band of the tray will kind of help make them feel a little bit more corralled and more organized. And that again, will help with the visual clutter of your space. And again, bowls are great for remotes, for keys, um, even for toys or um, things on a desk, you know, pens, sticky notes, all, all of those things. And I wanted to mention something really fun. Uh, yours truly will be featured in the upcoming fall issue of North Shore Home Magazine, which should be out in a couple of weeks. So if you enjoy reading home magazines and you are somewhere where you can pick yourself up a copy, usually you can find it at grocery stores, Walgreens, CVS, that sort of thing. So if you want to read about uh, my latest project and a little bit more about me, pick up your latest copy of North Shore Home Magazine that should be out in a couple of weeks. I thought you would think that uh, would be really fun. And again, for those of you who haven't taken this class with me before, I publish all of this information up on my blog that you can find at thefreshmaker.net. And um, I'm a little bit busier than normal now, so I might not have it up right away, but it should certainly be up in the next week or two. And you can reference all of the information and the materials there and um, ask me questions and learn a little bit more about uh, some design tips and some, some fun stuff like that.
All right. Well, I wanted to save a little bit of extra time at the end to talk to you guys about your clutter issues. Um, and again, since it's such a gorgeous day, I thought some of you might wanna sneak out a little early and enjoy the day while we still have some time. Um, but I would love to hear from you and hear about any of your clutter issues or design woes or any questions that you guys had in regards to the presentation. Any takers? You can either just unmute yourself or raise your hand as well. Hey, see, I see, I live in a small, a small condo. We really downsized um, downtown in Winchester. And I'm wondering if you ever do any presentations for, I mean, what you've done there looks like you have some space, but for really people downsizing with into small condo type places and trying to figure it all out. Yeah, I haven't done any presentations on that topic mm -hmm. as of yet, but I'm happy to do a blog post about it. If, if I can't get it into a presentation, certainly a blog post. I think that's a really value, that would have a lot of really valuable uh, yeah. information. Yes, um, Anne. Stacy, I, uh, I, I have, uh, I guess I'm a, a paper hoarder or something, but I'm, <laughs> Right now, I'm trying to cope with so many uh, magazines that I've, for some reason, hung on to, mostly New Yorkers, and, you know, newsletters that I thought has something interesting. It's so hard to get rid of all of those things. I'm trying to do that now, but it's difficult. Do you have any pointers? Um, I share in exactly that struggle, Rosemary, because I have a collection of architecture magazines from like 2016 on. <laughs> so, you know, I, I can relate 100%. Um, yeah, and it's like when you go through them to give them away, you're like, oh, but I forgot about this article and this is really inspiring me right now. So maybe I should keep these a little longer. So, um, the things that I have tried to do to help curb that are one, I try to get rid of things that are older than three years. So I actually just recently went through the magazines and I was like, okay, Stacy, you'll have three years worth of dwell magazines. You don't need any more than that. So I reached out to some of my friends that I know really enjoy home decor and home magazines. And I, I asked if they would be uh, willing recipients. And so I special delivered a big stack of magazines to some people that I knew would really appreciate them. And that alone was really helpful because it wasn't just like I was throwing them in the recycling bin. I was really making someone's day by doing that. And so um, that helped a lot. Another thing that I do is I have um, this beautiful old, harvest basket like an apple picking basket it's really really long and it's really deep and so I'll put that next to my sofa in the living room and I kind of recycle out those magazines in there because I, I can stack them up pretty good and so then I feel like if they're being used and I'm appreciating them then you know it, it has they have a space and then the other one I store in some, have you seen those really long um, structured? Can I call you back later? I'm on a Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll put them in there so that from the front, it's just some leather structured file folders and then they're in there. So it also helps with the visual clutter. So it's not just a big old stack of magazines that after a while they're slippery. So they fall all down and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if that's helpful to you, but quickly to recap, give away some to people who would find that meaningful and that feels really good. Pair down to only three years, put some where you actually use them and then file the others in a way that's visually pleasing so that you can kind of recycle them out that way. Right. I, I also have an idea that worked for me pretty well. Another thing I'm trying, I'm really trying to, I'm in a condo, but I still have to pare down. Mm -hmm. And I've got so many 
pictures, photographs, mm. that, you know, that have been taken from when my kids were in school to grandkids to, you know, the whole thing. So it takes a lot of time, but I, I went through a whole bunch of really big bunch. Then I had some, the grandchildren from one family over and I had made little piles of pictures for each of them. I thought, you know, it's not like throwing them away, as you said before. Right. Because, you know, it's hard to throw away family pictures. So I made, you know, for each kid, whoever was the star of the picture, and, you know, I made piles. And I had piles about an inch and a half for each kid. And so we had lunch together, and I passed them out. And it was great. They loved them, you know. They had a lot of them they hadn't seen and, you know, or they hadn't remembered. So that was a great way to get through some of the pictures mm -hmm. and make somebody happy also. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, because give them away. You know, it's hard to throw away family pictures. So if you give them away, it's not so bad. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. Yes, yeah. Anne. Yeah, I was just wondering if you have any suggestions for appliances on the counters in the kitchen that mm -hmm. you use not every day, but often that, I mean, I don't have room under my counters anyway for them. Yeah, what do you have on the counter? <laughs> well, like an Instant Pot. Um, oh, yep. Like big ones. Um, and they're heavy to put under, well, I don't really have any place to put them. Yeah. Um, and I just got, which I haven't put on, um, the fryer, the air fryer, which I haven't really learned how to use yet, but that's really big. Yeah. And other than putting them down in the basement, I don't have anywhere else to put them. Do you have room in your kitchen for like a little, one of those like rolling kitchen carts or anything like that? Hmm. I probably, I could do that. Yeah. Because I didn't um, think of that. For other clients, what I have suggested in the past, sometimes you can get those rolling carts where um, it's closed underneath. It's like a chopping block on the top. And then there's like a little shelf for mm -hmm. something small. And then underneath, it's just some cabinets, but it's yeah. on wheels. So it's not like crazy heavy. Right. Um, I have found those can come in handy for, for people who have the space for that. Because um, mm -hmm. then you can get it off the counter and it creates a right. little bit more cupboard space. It looks better. Yeah. yeah, it looks a little bit better. Another thing that I try to do, you know, I haven't seen your kitchen, but another thing I recommend, I've, I've noticed that a lot of times when people have countertop appliances, they'll put them all in a row, like right next to each right. other. And so I recommend if, as much as you can, if you can just distribute some of that visual weight throughout the kitchen, that alone can help. And then maybe a pretty little, countertop um, pot of herbs or something like neck on top of it or next to it or something to kind of like integrate it into the landscape of the kitchen. That can also be helpful. Um, but those would be my two suggestions right away. Um, yeah. You know, it, they, they're really hard. It, those well, are a struggle. I think that might work. I mean, I have a family room off of the kitchen, so mm -hmm. I might be able to like just put it on the other side. And where would you get that? Like at Bed and Bath or? Like the rolling cart? Yeah. Yeah, you can find it. Um, you know, you can find decent ones on places like Wayfair. Even mm -hmm. Target now has quite an online offering um, of items, um, things like an overstock as well because it's not necessarily if it's not going to be a permanent fixture in your kitchen you might not want to spend a ton on it so those would be great places to look for something that will, will serve you for a little while okay well thank you and i'm gonna try the amber bottles too good i <laughs> that in my own I haven't thought of that one <laughs> it makes such, it makes such a difference it really really does and some natural sponges too are definitely a huge yeah. A, a huge Thank improvement. You. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Anybody else? General questions or related questions? Hi, Stacy. Yes. How are you? Hi, Dana. Is it Dana? Yes. Yes. Hello. I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Um, I really enjoy your presentations. I've attended a lot of them, and I think you do a wonderful job. And um, I was curious about your photographs. Do you take a lot of those or are they stock photos or a blend of both? 
Great question. They are normally a blend of both. So mm -hmm. depending on um, what I'm speaking about, how much, um, how specific I need to get, sometimes I'll take photos from my own house or sometimes I'll just take photos, um, you know, from Pinterest or um, the internet that meet the needs of the presentation. Okay, very good. I, I, I really like them. You do a wonderful job. Thank you. And I have noticed that you do attend a lot. So I really am grateful <laughs> to you and I appreciate you coming. So thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. Well, you guys are wonderful as always. And if you ever come up with any questions or challenges in the interim, feel free to hit me up on my website and I'll do my best to help answer your questions. Okay, that, that is uh, fresh, freshmaker.net? That's correct, the freshmaker.net. Okay, thanks, Stacy. Yes, of course. And go get that fall copy of North Shore of Home Magazine. Okay. Thanks, Stacy. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy, very much. October 9th is your next presentation, that's the Jenks, yes. correct? Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. Great. Great. It'll be fun. Yeah. We'll do some, yeah. Halloween, some Halloween DIY, yeah. some fall, fall decor. So. Yep. Be sure to um, go to the Jenks website to see the full schedule that I mentioned at the beginning. Thank you again, Stacy. My pleasure. See you guys okay. later. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.